Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo Group. In, in the fans of Serif Software Facebook page, John B. Manos wanted some help with this video here about altering the perspective on a mock-up um, cardboard box. Um, he was having some trouble with the video and this is the video here and it is it's quite long, it's like 44 minutes long but there's no soundtrack and the chap that's doing it is is making some mistakes and going back and because there's no soundtrack and he's doing it very quick it's very hard to follow what he's doing and even now I've watched it a couple of times I think and there's some parts of it even though I don't know what he's doing. So I'm going to make my best guess at what's going on in some cases. I may be getting it wrong, but hopefully the end result will be okay um, for the purposes of helping other people know what is going on. Um, so this person who did this is Wave F. However, um, he, I think he starts off in Affinity Designer, moves it into Affinity Photo to do the perspective, and I think moves it back to Affinity Designer. I'm just going to stick with doing it all in Affinity Photo um, because I don't really get on so well with Designer as I do with Photo. So I'm going to stick with Photo, but you can, if you've got both programs, you can switch between the two and do it that way if you so wish. So first of all I need a box image. Now what I have found is this GDJ graphics and on this page you get 27 mockups for uh, free templates and they are PSD which is a Photoshop uh, file. And there's all sorts of mock-ups you can get down here. There's like magazine mock-ups, window pane, and all sorts of different ones. And you can download each one individually, or you get sent to a page where you can download them. And this is where I found this mock-up box. Um, so if you click on download mock-up, you will eventually get to Zippy Pixels website and on their mock-up page as you can see they do flyers, frames, devices and all sorts of things. And if you go right down to the very bottom of this page you can download a commercial version of it for $3.99 and you get a, a, yeah, a fairly big image size but the free one it's quite a small image size but for the purposes of this video that's all I really need so I'm just going to use the free version and for this I must credit Zippy Pixels which I have done um, and I will add a link to this page in the um, description for this video along with the page for the original video if you want to look at how he did it and see where, where I've missed things and where you might be able to do it better. So I have downloaded this file and if I go to Affinity Photo um, you get two PDS files and these are one with the box lid shut and one with the box lid slightly open. And as you can see, you can see all the different layers here. Um, in fact, these, this one here I should really have deleted because it's from my practice run. Um, but in the video that we were sort of trying to emulate, I think he just um, copied the picture. He didn't actually download the proper file. Um, so he was then having to 
use in painting and clone brushes and what have you to get rid of the logos but if you download the proper file you can just come to the smart objects layer and take the tick out and it gets rid of all those logos in one hit so now we need to add our own logo or wording or whatever you want to do now I will freely admit that designing logos is nothing I've, I've ever really done so I'm not really any good at it so you'll have to forgive me for this but I've just quickly done this um, this line I did as a practice thing when I was learning a bit about um, Affinity Designer and I've just added a, a quick name to that and I'm going to be using this as my logo so what I'm going to do I will be moving this in to this in a minute but first of all I want to add a new layer now what I'm going to do is just click on add pixel layer and then I'm going to just fill it with a color I've got a red set up at the moment so I'll just fill that with red and I'll come to the move tool and I will hold down the control key and just quickly resize that to roughly where I want it and then I'll come to this tool down here which is the perspective tool and I'll click on that and then you get this grid which you can get rid of the grid if you want to um, and the four nodes that you can move so I'm going to just quickly move that down the side of this box here now I could fill the whole side um, which would be far easier because I would have the corners of the box to go by but I want to make this logo slightly smaller so I'm going to zoom in and somebody with more knowledge of this program will probably know a way around this but I'm going to have to do this by eye. I'm sure I could probably put a grid on there if I knew which grid to use, but it's a case of just trying to get it to look like it's an even distance down this edge here and down that edge there. I think that's not too bad. So I'll click apply on that. So now I want my logo. So I'm just going to copy that. Come back to my box image. And then edit and paste. Now my line image is very big compared to this PDS file. So what I'll do is I'll just hold down the control key and click and drag to resize that. Bring that into the area I want roughly. Press control and zero to resize. And now just click on the perspective tool again. And I'm going to put this over the corners of this red square. And again, I will zoom in so I can see it better. And once I'm happy, I can just click apply, press control and zero to move out again. And then if I click on the red pixel layer and hide that, as you can see that logo is now sort of running along the side of the box and in perspective it does look pixelated because this is zoomed out to 150 percent if i drop this down to 100 percent hopefully that won't look as bad so let me just resize that again so now i want to do a similar thing on this side here so again i'm going to 
add a new layer flood fill it hold down the control key and resize we just do a quick rotate on there and then I'm going to click on the perspective tool and I'll make it a bit smaller this time I think but again I'm having to sort of try and get the perspective right by eye as I'm not 100% certain how best to do that using a grid or some other method but I'm hoping this is okay and people will bear with me here Right, so that's about right, I think. Maybe just needs to nudge it slightly that way. Yeah, that would do. So again, I just need to copy this image paste it in resize it get it roughly where I want it come to the perspective tool and get it over the red box that I made you don't necessarily have to make a colored area to work from but I found it easier because it's easier for me to see the perspective that I'm trying to guess um, I found it easier to do with a colored box than I did with this PNG file that has no background so you've got no real way of seeing what you're aiming at so I think that's close enough. Click apply, zoom out to 100%, turn off that red. Go back there, get rid of that box, and then you can see I've got the logo one smaller, one bigger on the side of the box. And then you could then go and add other things that you might want, like this way up, and what have you in a similar process on the other sides of the box and if you wanted to then get rid of say the background which is easy to do because because this is a PDS file you've got all the layers so you've got the background here so you could just turn that off and you've got a ready-made PNG file you can save it without the background and plonk it on some other project that you have going on so I'm hoping this answers um, all of John's um, questions about this video um, and hopefully that will be everything that he needs to know and he can work from that this idea that I've done to sort of work out what he wants to do with that particular project um, so thank you for watching and goodbye.